presentation contains current opinions of Moe Sansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor, and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice. We make no assurance that Moe's opinions or illustrations will accurately predict future prices or financial markets. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance. A detailed disclosure can be found at the end of the presentation. And now here's Mo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Compact YouTube update for September 23rd, 2024. I'm Mo Ansari, President of Compaq Asset Management. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe to all of these updates that we do, the YouTube update, uh, the podcast that Javed and I will do, which you will get notification of as soon as we post it. And then you can get the weekly newsletter and all the events that we do all around the world. You can always come and attend all of those Zoom updates wherever you are and all of the other events. They're all free. All you have to do is go to compact.com forward slash media, compact.com forward slash media. Just go and you can sign up right down there and you can get all of these notifications. Let's start with the numbers. S&P up 1.39% last week, a little bit of a bounce back. Dow also up 1.67, but the one that did really well was the Russell small cap up 2.1%. Also, we saw NASDAQ up 1.51% for the week. So a really good week, but not a fantastic week. But we did get 50 basis points, the double cut, as it is being called by the Federal Reserve. They reduced interest rates by 50 basis points. Again, the expectation was 25. And if you heard the broadcast, Javed and I talked a lot about that last Tuesday morning, a day before the Fed made the cut. And as you know, I was asking for a 50 basis point cut, and most of the people were looking for 25. Well, we got our 50. What does that mean for the markets? That's the next question. Is this the economy too slow? Are we going into recession? So the Fed has to cut interest rates. I don't think so. The economy is doing okay. It is slowing down. It will continue to slow down a little bit more. We are seeing some, some weakening in the, in the labor market, but we're no more close to a recessionary number where we could be going into a recession. We're just slowing down. Finally, we're coming out of all the crazy spending that happened after COVID. We've used up all of the extra savings that had accumulated. Now we're getting back into a normal rhythm as far as spending goes and as far as employment goes. Unemployment's starting to go up a little bit, which the Fed has a dual mandate. They have to look for inflation and they have to make sure unemployment is low. So now they're saying they're not going to concentrate on inflation as much. Inflation is running around 2.6, 2.7%. We get the PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index this week, and that's the one index that Fed watches very carefully. Last week, the best sector was energy, and if you saw the charts that I pointed out last week, energy had gotten to a third wave bottom. We thought we were going to get a bounce off of that. And that's all this is. It's a bounce. The heightened tensions in the Middle East did also help uh, the market. In, in real estate was the worst market, even though interest rates went down by the Fed. But if you see, look at the bond markets, which I'll show you a chart, interest rates on the 10-year went up. They had come down a little bit too much on the downside. They bounced up a little bit, which is good. That means that the bond market is not worried about a recession. If the bonds interest rates continue to go down in the market, that means we're headed to a recession. But the bond market did not interpret the cut as that. Oil was up a little bit last week compared to the week before. It's still down from where it was last year, but we are starting to uh, come back up a little bit on that. Interest rates, as I mentioned, in 10 year went from 3.66 to 3.73, even though the Fed cut interest rates. So with that, the market already knew we were getting an interest rate cut, did not expect a 50 basis point, but the market had over discounted to the downside and now is not worried as much about a recession. If you look at the cumulative changes, rates by cutting cycles, once they start cutting rates uh, without a recession, these are the lines in, in sort of this mustard colored line. And you can see that the rates continue to go down, but at a slower rate. But when we have recessions, you can see these dark lines, the interest rates go down at a much faster rate. I think, again, we'll get another 25 basis point at the next meeting and then another 25 before the end of the year. So we'll end up 1% lower than where we are now, as long as we do not see a spike in inflation 
which I do not anticipate at this point. We do get home sales this week, new home sales, just about the same. Initial claims for unemployment, 225. We get the first, uh, second quarter GDP, expect it to be around 2.9, about the same, which is a pretty good clip if we get uh, 3%. That's the consensus expectation, uh, and that's what we had in the previous quarter, also 3%, which is a pretty nice bit. Usually it's between 2 to 3% GDP growth is what we get. And then we look at durable goods, uh, personal income, so not a lot of critical data coming out. It'll be the week after that we get a lot more critical data. Looking at the technicals, again, we made this wave one bottom. We, uh, we A, B, C, correct. After five waves, we get an A, B, C, and that's what we got, A, B, C, and now we've started a new wave count to the upside. New all-time highs in the market. That's what we are seeing across the board, and this is, seems to be wave one, two, and we're in wave three. I think this will be reclassified as wave one, this will be wave two, and now we're starting wave three to the upside. And that comes out quite a bit higher, around 6,600, even on the daily charts. Support is the 20-day moving average, which is 55.60. Then the 50-day moving average, which is 55.20. We are uh, somewhere around 57.20 today, uh, going into the close in the market. Weekly charts, again, third wave. Uh, we continue to move up on the third wave. We sh will get a fourth wave pullback somewhere, uh, but from where, we don't know yet. Somewhere between, I think, 5,800 is the target short term, and we're at 5,720. From there, we could get, as we get closer to the election, we'll get a little bit more anxiety. And as we get that election anxiety, that might give us an opportunity on a pullback in the market to, to reposition if you are out of the market or just to make slight changes in, the, in, the, in your positions. NASDAQ gapped up on Friday, nice gap up on, thurs, uh, on Thursday, came back down a little on Friday, and we we're up, up about unchanged today, not much up, but it looks like we're starting another wave count to the upside. Looking at the weeklies, which is much more critical, my dot plot, as long as the market, this is the market, the vertical lines, the red and green line, is below these dots, we're in a bearish mode. When it's above these dots, which it turned up last October of last year, and we stayed up until here, right here, which is you know somewhere in August, we've had these six, seven weeks of down move, as I mentioned on a weekly chart. So once we get this down move, usually lasts six, seven weeks, and that's what we saw. But this number, the dot now, this week is 18,100. That's where we are. We hit a high today of 1821. We need to get to 18100. If we can, the dots would flip to the downside again. Then the dots will be down here, and that'll show that the market has turned up to the upside on a weekly basis. And that would be a nice sign for the for the tech for the Nasdaq technicals to turn up. Looking at the 10-year, as I mentioned last week, we we're down to 3.6 all the way down here. That would look like a third wave bottom. Now we're seeing a fourth wave bounce to the upside, and then we'll see another decline to the downside. So we're right at the 20-day moving average, which is 3.74. Today's high was 3, and we are right at, going into the close, at 3.739, just about 3.74. I think, we, as I've mentioned, fourth waves are, are messy. They go up and down and up and down a little bit, and I think we'll stay in this range for a little bit. Oil, as I mentioned last week, looked like it had made a bottom, a fifth wave bottom. We're going to get a rally, which we did. I think we can get to this 74 and a half area on, on the uh, crude oil chart. Looking at the weekly small caps, bounced off the 20 week moving average, this red line, which is 211. My target is 245 on the upside, which was this high that we made uh, October of 21, nearly two years ago. And that's uh, where this high was. And we had. So if we break out above 245, that would be a nice move to the upside. If we can get above here, and we are right here, right now, then my 258 to 285 target will come in. Small caps benefit more as interest rates come down, and that's what we are going to see, I think, over the next few months. Gold continues to move higher. Nice move to the upside. 2569 is support. That's the 20-day moving average, then the 50-day moving average. But we are getting close to a fifth wave top. 
which will set up an ABC correction somewhere to the downside. We still could get to about 2680 to about 2675. We are 2652 today. So we're just bouncing along here. But we've had a nice run in gold. As I've talked about the last few months on the podcast, I think we are headed higher in the gold market as interest rates come down, the dollar comes down, and that, that gives the market a boost. Again, if you need help with your portfolio, you can always give us a call or go to investedcompact.com, investedcompact.com, or just give us a call, and we'll get in touch with you. All of the, we'll set up an initial appointment, do a review of your portfolio. All of that is free. Get a second opinion on your assets. That's what you need to do is find someone that will develop a holistic approach to get you from where you are now to where you want to go financially. Those are my thoughts. Those are my views for this week. I will be back with you next week. And don't forget to tune into the podcast. Javed and I will talk about the same subjects that we talked about right here, but in a lot more detail. So tune into that. I will be back with you next week. Until then, good trading. This presentation contains the current views and opinions of Moise Ansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. The views expressed are current only as of the date of this presentation and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice, and nothing is personalized to any investor's individual circumstances. Compact Asset Management offers investment advice only after entering into an investment advisory agreement and gathering client-specific information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance.